conversation on race. It was a community dialogue in partnership with the City of Savage, City of Savage Police Department, and also SEMA. Uh, I want to thank everyone for the invite. I was very grateful and humbled to be a facilitator um, in a surrounding town from my hometown where I grew up in and graduate high school, which is Burnsville, Minnesota. So what we're going to go to today is some of the conversations that we had at this event, um, the dialogue, the authentic stories that so many people have experienced with racism and how we address racism. And so one of the things, and some, one of the questions that we were, we were asked were, was, um, what words or feelings came up for you when you listened to the speakers today? And today we had a couple speakers, two um, Somali American women for, who, are grad, who are students right now at the school of Burnsville High School. Uh, the chief of police as well of Savage, and also one of the council members and city officials of the state of Minnesota. The two students spoke from their heart of how they have experienced so much racism and microaggressions uh, just being Somali American women. Uh, for those who are people of color, we all know when we're going to experience racism or microaggressions. And we typically notice when we're going to experience that when we're going into certain environments that don't necessarily reflect our skin tone. So if we, as a person of color, we go into an environment, we know that we're going to be looked at, either looked at um, or looked down upon. And so many times I have experienced that in my own life as being a person of color, being the token at the table, uh, and all these other conversations that, again, I've had to suppress or experiences I've had to suppress because um, I've always tried to see the bigger picture of what a person is trying to say, even when I know the subtle, you know, the subtle language that people intentionally try to navigate and say that they're not really saying. What gets in the way of keeps? Another question was we asked was, what gets in the way or keeps you from talking about race? And a lot of people, uh, we had a packed event, over 105 attendees, a lot of Caucasian people. We didn't have many minorities in the audience, but we expected that. But it was a really good conversation from all walks of life, people from young, that were young, people who were older. And one thing I learned about the generation that wants change is that no matter what age they were at, people that were 65, people who were just as young as four years old, the change starts when you're authentic enough to actually have the discomfort behind having the conversation. Race affects us all, whether you're white, black, Puerto Rican, whatever color tone you you know you affiliate yourself yourself with. Race affects us all, and the conversation that we have to have about race has to really be told and you know asked from people of color. You know. People of color are always having to share their stories and feel like the stories aren't being heard. And so today we had a, you know, circle group. Everyone talked to, well, you know, white or black, whatever skin tone you were. We were you were asked these ten, these, uh, these nine questions. I'll, read some, I'll just read them all out. Uh, first one, what, what words or feelings came up to you when you were listening to the speakers? Number two, what gets in the way of, or keeps you from talking about race? Number three, have you personally experienced racism? What was your earliest memory of, of an experience with racism? Number four, how does racism play out in your workplace, neighborhood, and community? Number five, what would happen if you don't, what would happen if we don't have conversations on racism in our communities? Number six, what is the best that could happen as a result of these conversations about racism? And number seven, what opportunities to what opportunities to improve race relations do you have or are already doing? Number eight, what questions do you have that are stemmed from today's event? And what are you willing to do differently as a result of today's event? And I'll touch base on uh, what questions, what, what, I, what am I willing to do different from, a, a res, from this result of this event? One thing I'm willing to do is continue to combat racism on Facebook, Instagram, face-to-face, -face, whatever people are being indifferent to people who are different. I'm willing to share their tough articles. I could care less about any person's political opinion, politics. I'm a political person, but I don't really care about the, char the, the category of Democrat versus Republican. If you're a racist person, if you support a person that's racist, a person that's misogynistic, a person that puts down another culture, race, I'm going to call you a racist. 
Because if you support that, you if you support a person that is like that, you support the actions of that person because you may also support those actions or believe in those actions or believe in those beliefs of that person. You are a racist and it's okay. You just have to be okay with it as well. It is what it is. I'm sorry to tell the fact, but you are racist if you support a person who's racist, if you support a person that says certain things about certain people. And race is a tough thing to talk about, but not for those who are experienced racism, only the people who give it because they are denied, they deny, deny the history of what racism comes and what racism actually entails. Another thing is, um, one thing I had a conversation, what ways have I experienced racism in my life? And I'll give you guys three stories. When I was younger, I remember, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee, and I didn't notice I was white. I didn't notice I was black until I was told it, told by that in, by a white person. And this is when I was relative, not even, you know, this is in kindergarten. I had a person ask me, why is my skin tone like that? That was one of my first experience. And when I started to play tag with certain kids, some kids didn't want to play tag with me because they didn't want my skin to rub off on them. Again, didn't know how to really take that. And, you know, I was very isolated as a kid. And then... Growing up, I was a wrestler, wrestled in Burnsville High School, and I remember hearing the snickers of certain people. I remember I was taking, I was using the restroom, and I was in a stall, and one of the kids was like, oh, I have to wrestle a black guy, and I don't want to wrestle him. And I remember a kid forfeiting, literally forfeiting the match because he didn't want to wrestle a black person. I got the W, it is what it is, but to be, it was just such a blame, just stupid, ideology it's just like you won't wrestle someone because of their skin tone that was another experience and i know i've experienced mul multiple microaggressions not only from the opposite race but i mean there's racism even in race uh you know as a person of color i've always been bullied by my own people of you don't you're not black you're not black enough because i don't act a certain way i don't dress a certain way and i don't speak a certain way and I'll, I remember going back home from Tennessee for my birthday um, last year, 2018. And my cousin, she's like, she's like, you, you know what? You're just a white black guy, because I speak the way I speak. And I told her, no, I am, an, I am a per, I am a, I am a black person who is articulate, who is educated. I'm just a brother who's educated. And I had to, you know, stand my ground because all my life I've been told I'm not black. And as you can tell, I'm quite black. Just because I don't come off a certain way, dress a certain way, does not mean I am not what my skin tone is. And we could talk race for hours, days, but racism has to be, racism will end when we're willing to have the conversation to actually delegate the, the, the narrative. I was grateful to be a part of this event. Great to meet some like-minded people. Got to meet the chief of Sa the Savage Police Department. He gave me an invite to have a sit down and do another partnership with them. I, I plan to sit down with them and have a doc, have a, continue my documentary, hashtag Pose with a Cop, changing the narrative between minorities and policing. Race is a tough issue for those who, again, don't know how to delegate it. But if we're not going to have the conversation, we will never see the change that we want to see in the world. So if you've combated racism in your life, if you've experienced racism, please tell a story below in the comments. We all want the same things out of life. Good health, wealth, a happy home, a happy life, happy wife, happy husband, whatever it looks like. And if we're ever going to really get to point A to point B and ultimately to point Z, we have to be a person that's willing to combat the racism and the, the, ignorant, the ignorant views of those who are closed-minded behind the changing cultures and communities that we are having throughout the entire world. Fight racism and fight. Fight it. Fight it. Fight it, combat people, continue to share the articles, continue to just be sick and tired of being sick and tired of being viewed a certain way because people will only see you for your skin tone. Fight racism, people. Keep the fight alive and keep being you.